Hi everyone, welcome to our podcast and today we're going to be talking about insane cults. We will be touching on Charles Manson and his Manson family, the People's Temple, which also is known for their Jonestown, and the Moonies, also known as the Unification Church of the United States. And I have here today with me comedic extraordinaire Derek West. And my name is Taylor, and we're just going to dive right in, and we're going to be talking about these topics. Some, two of them are pretty saddening, and the one, last one will kind of tie it, uh, not be as saddening as the other two. So, what makes a cult? So, a cult is defined as a social group that is defined by its unused religious, spiritual, or philosophical beliefs or by its common interest in a particular personality, object, or goal. So pretty much excessive devotion. And there are some traits to tell you what what makes a cult. And one would be your charismatic leader. Two would be your brainwashing, gaslighting, anything to convince people to kind of join the group. So conning someone. And then the third one is another big one, the economic, sexual, or other exploitation of a group members by the leader. And there are subcategories of cults. So we've got destructive, doomsday, political, polygamous, racist, and terrorist. So there's a bunch of different kinds. And over the years, there are still many today. There's still small cults. There's big cults. And so we're just going to kind of pick on three topics that we felt were best to discuss. And the first one we're going to talk about is Charles Manson. And he's actually known to be a notorious serial killer for his cult and the time frame that it all happened was between 1968 and 1971 it was a racist and doomsday cult so between july and august of 1968 charles manson convinced his cult the manson family was their nicknames and they were predominantly all women because it was more easier to kind of convince women to join his cult and he was convinced that Helter Skelter was an apocalyptic race war and that he was planning on kind of speeding up the process. Now, this all happened during a time of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and John F. Kennedy. So, civil rights was a big deal. So, he thought that he could speed up some kind of apocalyptic race war and he was going to have his uh, cult go around killing white, rich people in California and one of the famous murders is of Sharon Tate who was eight months pregnant and she was uh, at night with a friends in Hollywood home and they were all brutally murdered and the one thing about their murders is that they are famous for being overkills so on average each person that was killed that night had about 50 stab wounds and during these months about nine people were murdered Now, the thing about that was that Charles Manson was never present for the murders. So, he still did get first degree murder for conspiracy. Um, He did, he had one attempted, he raped two, and he had four victimless arsons. Um, It is believed that he did kill more than what he was saying. There is a quote that he said to somebody, audio, about how he thought that he was the best killer because he he got caught for crimes he didn't commit instead of the ones he did. There's a documentary on Amazon Prime that goes into one that they are pretty sure convinced that he killed her because she had 150 stab wounds and she was in the area and she kind of fit the description of the leader or the group members. So they were kind of a hit your stereotype cliche hippie family that kind of just sat around and um. Uh, did drugs all day from the main one. LSD all day. Yep. All day. All day, That's man. all they did. Drugs, drugs. That was the thing. Like, he, he just did a lot of, they, he had all the free drugs, so that's why people came over there. Oh, like, yeah. That's what it seemed like to me. Like, people was like, you know what? He got drugs. Let me go take him and hang out and see what happens. Yeah, I mean. that's what it seemed like he did. Well, I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently they had orgies also, which I wouldn't put it past it being the time error and being on LSD. Oh, so they so. was doing stuff and doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, what you're to tell exactly. Exactly. So, okay. Sometimes I guess you got to take stuff to do stuff. <laughs> if 
No, that's not how they work. I I feel like not all the women were all that attractive anyway, so I guess you could. So you said somebody was fugly, <laughs> and you said it. Not me now. You said some of these women were fugly. Huh? Maybe I don't know. The fuck? Okay. But see, this is the thing about saying all the women what some of the women want to attract. All women are attractive mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. True. You ever went to Walmart and saw that lady? In the wheelchair, and she got nine kids behind her. Yeah. Somebody like that lady. That's somebody true. That is very somebody true. Got, listen, somebody did oh. some stuff and did some other stuff with that lady. Oh my gosh. Okay, so he ended up dying in prison in 2017, so not long ago. But before that, there was this guy that he would talk to that they were friends through a friend or whatever. And his one of his questions he asked him was, "What is his favorite kind of bug?" Like, that was one of the first questions he asked him. What's his favorite kind of bug? Bug. I feel like Charles Manson was probably crazy. Like, he, he was, like, really weird and oddball. He did LSD all day. Of yeah, course that's he true. was crazy. That's this is what true. you got to understand. I know at least two to three to seven people that have done LSD <laughs> consistently all through the 70s. Yeah. And all of them crazy. All of them good and crazy. So when you do yeah. that type stuff yeah. consistently... You're going to become crazy. That's true. Suppose it's like a, they saying there's an awakening drug. I think it's just you high consistently. I ain't <laughs> never done it myself. But, I mean, it just, you know. So, he was doing all that crazy mess. He had all the women doing all that crazy mess. And they, I think they just stayed around. It seemed like they stayed around because of the drugs. Yeah, that's really what And he like. was so high in the court. Did you remember? That? Okay. Did you hear them talking about the court proceedings? Yeah, like he was put on a show. He was, uh, trying to hypnotize people. In yeah, the court. it was crazy. I don't, he, he was looking at the, the um one of the, the sheriff, the police officer, was up there yeah. testifying, and he was sitting there up there like this. He, he's sitting there, he's so high because you know it's staying your spine. LSD yeah. staying your spine. So he's sitting there like this, <laughs> looking at the guy now. He was trying a to weird one. Do you know he how? He said the guy was trying to try not to laugh the whole time. Did you see how short he was? He a little bitty guy. He itty bitty. Yeah, I thought that They're was actually kind of itty... weird. But They're I guess part of the itty bitty committee. There's drugs. That I feel like that yeah. was the gateway into that cult. Uh huh. And they weren't sound of mind. I feel for those women though, man. I I feel Wyndham like. tried to get out not too long ago. Oh well, no surprise. She was sixty. I think it was like sixty-five, and she was trying to go up for parole. Yeah. Yeah, and they almost let her out. Wow. Yeah. Well, but then she had a trip. She was in there doing her um her, a court appearance, a parole appearance, and that LED hit her spine again, and she went out crazy, <laughs> right in the middle. Of it. Wow. Oh. Yeah, we ain't got to worry about it. No, we ain't got to worry about it. For, yeah, they still do. You got to understand. You can't put somebody on parole that did LSD for a a, a long period of time. And they probably did a lot. They're, of course, they did a lot of it. Almost a, a daily. Yeah, oh. they probably put some of them in, in their rear behind. Because, you know, some of people be boofing it. Yeah. Yeah, it get in your system uh, faster, faster when you put it in yeah. that space. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Is it true? Okay, yeah. It is true. I've heard that one, too. Where okay, I don't know if it's that... true. So you ready for the next what? one? Let's do it. This one kind of was a little rough to do the research on. Because, like... That, that whole tape thing was just so sad to listen. It drained me the one day. I was just so drained from it. With the Jim Jones, it's a little bit different. It because is. it was it wasn't religious. It was more uh, political than anything. It was. And I think a lot of people missed it. Yeah. All right, so the right. time frame, the People's Temple was founded by Jim Jones in 1950s. So he was born in Indiana, and he grew up to, in Indiana, started the cult with his wife. They ended up moving to California because of political views. He was a preacher and a civil rights activist. So his whole intention behind his cult was actually a very, very good one. He wanted uh, equal equality. He did want, he wanted all races to be able to um, practice uh, Christianity together. From when he was in California, it became a huge thing because uh, Especially that being at California, it's 1970s, 
So everybody was trying to finally get into a little bit closer to equality than before. Between, uh, I want to say it was 1976 to 78, they end up moving their cult down to, I can't pronounce this place, Guana in South... Uh, Guana. Guana. Ghana. 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 There it is. Ghana. In South America. Yeah. So it was about 3,000 acres. First, before we get into what actually ended the cult. Jim Jones, a little bit more things about him. When he was a kid, high schooler, he worked at a hospital. He cleaned like bedpans and cleaned up amputees, you know, extras. And the other thing about him was he was considered an oddball too when he was growing up. Uh -huh. Like people thought he was uh -huh. kind of strange. Thought he got, he, getting, he got picked on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's where it all started to go bad for them. The San Francisco Examiner did an article on the cult, well, sorry, on People's Temple, and it got some some people's attention, including Congressman Leo Ryan. So he decided that he wanted to go see how this compound was. I've also noticed that there are a lot of cults during this time era. I bet they... Because people were looking for answers. Yeah. People were trying to figure out who they were, and they were trying to figure out where they were going, because... This is what I understand. It was, it was around, because what years was it? So 19, around what years? 1970s. So this is all around a, the time where civil rights was really big yeah. at that time. And a lot of people trying to figure out where they was going and what it, and how they was going to continue. Because, you know, black people was over here, white people was over there. I mean, yeah. and all honesty, that's how it was. So they were trying to figure out how, and, and it was a lot of things changing going back and forward at that time. So. Congress... Um, and Leo Ryan, from what I could tell, Jim Jones said yes to him at first, and then he was trying to take it back. Like, I feel like Jim Jones was kind of lying to a lot of people about that situation. And then, because his son, Jim Jones' son, was still alive, because I saw a documentary of him talking about this. So, mm -hmm. to the compound, and somebody gives him a note saying, hey, get me out of here, man. I don't know exactly what that, I didn't, I didn't. But that's basically what he was saying. I believe that guy's still alive. And that's kind of where it all definitely, like, you could tell that Jim Jones was playing on this. The moment that the government kind of noticed them, that he was going to kill him off. Because he already was kind of planning on doing what he did anyway before. Okay, okay. Because yeah. he, he told them, he said, if the CIA ever comes in, we're going to have to get rid of everything. So he was prepared. This wasn't, like, random decision. So Leo, Ryan, and then they go back to their plane. So this is where it starts to really hit. They go back to the plane, and some of the People's Temple's members end up uh, shooting all the people from Leo Ryan's. I only think two people out of the whole group end up living. I could be wrong. And then during this time, while they're shooting the people, Leo Ryan's people, back at the pavilion, Jim Jones is telling all his all his people to go to their houses or little little huts or whatever they were. Mm -hmm. So during that time while they're back in their places, this is when he's having the flavor aid, Kool-Aid, paired, and it contains Valium, so relaxing muscles, chloral hydrate, potassium cyanide, vinegar. Vinegar. Let me tell you a story about vinegar. Vinegar they give to pregnant women when they nod. But you know, it's for nausea as well. Yeah. I vinegar is the best thing to take if you're ever trying to get drunk. Because you can't drink, you can't get drunk on vinegar. I'm not saying, I'm not promoting doing <laughs> yeah, that's, vinegar. That's fake. Let me say that first. Yeah. But if you got it in your vicinity and you over 30, <laughs> take your little pee. Take your little pee. Take your little pee. You can get drunk all you want. You get drunk. You get drunk. You ain't going to throw up, go to sleep, nothing. You're going to be up all night. You're going to be cooking chicken in the morning. It just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So this is where the infamous saying is, don't drink the Kool-Aid comes from. Oh, uh, okay. Mm, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, so let's back up a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Because, first of all, you're telling me that the day of the shooting. Yes. So while the shooting was going on, he's preparing this. He was preparing the Kool-Aid. Yes. It's all happening on the same day? Yes. November 18th. And then was it the next day when he had the death tape? Uh, I believe when it was I'm all on the same day. So Leo That's Ryan crazy. came. They shot him. While they're shooting him, they're making the Kool-Aid. 
And then they he calls everybody back out. Or they're, he's telling them that Leo Ryan's people were the ones to blame. That they had a gun. And so that's why they started shooting at him. And then he um, says that it's time to move on go to the afterlife or something whatever it's that's when everybody and then he started with the kids they did they did i think they had syringes and they had the cups a lot there were some there was one lady that i know there's definitely one lady that survived because she hid underneath their bed then i think majority 909 people died on that compound that day uh eight other people's died in a in other areas it was kind of like you know in star wars where they ordered What's that one where they order to kill everybody? That's kind of how it... Okay. I don't know nothing about no Star Wars. I don't, I don't know, know either. About... I just saw so it on me. I don't... I don't know nothing about no memes or no Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no Star Wars. So we can't talk about no Star Wars. I don't know nothing about no Star Wars. Kind of worried but it was that's something where they happened got it in from. Star Wars where somebody got, was ordered to get shot. So you are telling... Okay, so you said he was, uh, he was picked on as a kid, and that's what led him into the Pentecostal church. Because he yes. felt like they were kind of the, the uh, well, how he felt, they were kind of the black sheep of the Christian community, right? Yeah, that's why he wanted to do any so he quali- into or equality, yes. There we go. So it was more of a political thing Yes. that he figured that he could probably uh, add some, yeah. some fire under. Rumor is, you know uh, rumor is, is that his wife, thought he was an atheist didn't think he believed in god so that's great it's and then he becomes a preacher yeah becomes a preacher does very well they from what i heard they say he was a very uh charismatic uh uh, preacher you know he liked he liked the 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 soul of the preaching the hemming of it Mm -hmm. The, the the you know he he kind of marked himself as a, as a a, a, a southern preacher in, in in some um some sorts, uh, and it seemed like he was he gained he had a lot of fans, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people liked the way he spoke. Now what he was speaking about had nothing to do with anything religious, mostly all revolutionary, West kumbaya, let's be together, which is all great. We should be yeah. together, but that's what he was preaching. That's right? that's how he got a lot of a lot of those people. A lot of people, and then he went down to Georgetown and brought all them people over there. Yeah. And supposedly everybody was great at first. Mm-hmm. And then he went he went I crazy was... cuz he had to start wearing those sunglasses and I can't was it cuz he was doing drugs? I think it was drugs. He was he was he was putting them in a he was boofing probably he was putting them up stuff. Yeah. He probably, he probably didn't put it in his nose or nothing like that or put it in his knee it is all cuz his followers see so he probably put it up in his in his rear end. He put it definitely in his rectum. Yeah. Put it probably in his rectum. He boofing drugs and getting high, doing preaching speeches. Yeah. Probably and, what was going on. And then their compound was very like communism style. Okay, so let's bring up one other thing before nine eleven happened. This is actually considered the the largest single loss of American civilian life in a deliberate la- act. So before two thousand one, it was uh it was probably one of the worst considered one of the worst but so besides wars so that's what was okay. one of the worst um a largest uh american civilian life lost so oh, yeah mm-hmm, 918 now we can't we can't talk about them drinking the kool-aid yet before we talk about the death tapes oh i know oh okay are you ready for this about the Kool-Aid because that's the thing you got to talk about what led up to the kool-aid mm-hmm. right first of all Kool Aid is delicious. <laughs> That's what you gotta understand. Yeah. It is nothing wrong with drinking Kool Aid. Yeah. It's what they put in the Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. What they didn't do is put three big cups of sugar <laughs> and stir it up. They didn't do that because all you really need three big cups and depending on what how much Kool Aid you put in there, but it's about yeah. three to four, big, four scoops really yeah. is all you need. Four scoops of sugar, or if you're gonna make the Kool Aid right, you just take the whole bag and pour it until. It gets heavy enough while the sugar's gone, and then you stir it with a giant spoon, and then mix it up, and it's sweet. Now that might kill you too, but your blood pressure is gonna be high. It ain't gonna really like. <laughs> it ain't gonna really be too much of like of poison. It just yeah. You might pass out from all the sweets of the sugar, but that's how you make Kool Aid. Yeah. But they didn't make Kool Aid right at nah. all. They put a lot of other stuff. But okay, 
So, the depth tapes. Yeah. He was, like you said, he was a charismatic gentleman. All these people followed and loved him, right? Yeah. Congressman almost gets almost get shot on the compound. Now he got to figure it out. Yeah. He got to figure out what's his next move. So he decided he ain't going to jail. <laughs> Pretty much. Right. So we gonna just, I'm just gonna die, and we all gonna die together. He made comments right? about him doing stuff that was considered illegal. So he knew some of the stuff that he was doing was wrong. Of course he knew it was wrong, but he was doing it in the in trying to make it. It was a what do you call it? It was for the Greater the revolution. Of people. Oh, okay, yeah. It, was. it had nothing to do with anything spiritual. It was for the revolution of people. He even said it yeah. in It was for the revolution of all us being together. Yeah, that's what he said. So. When he uh, when he was talking to him about doing the Kool Aid, he said, "This is not mass suicide. This is a revolution, and we gonna kill ourselves. God ain't gonna ain't gonna be mad at us for committing suicide because we ain't committing suicide." Yeah, I don't know. That's what he said, but it was definitely suicide. No, but the definitely... one lady, the one lady says, she said, "I don't want to die." Can we go to Russia? Because supposedly he had told them he had made a deal with Russia and them going to Russia. Now, I don't think he ever talked to Russia at all, ever. Probably not. I, I think what happened was he said it was just to tell them what they needed to hear. Yeah. And that's what most, like, pimps do. Like, you just tell them what they need to hear. Because pimps just want you to do what they want them to do. And that's what he was doing. He was yeah. pimping these people. He was pimping them. That's all we were doing. They didn't have to wear no heels. They didn't have to go stand on no corners. But they definitely was getting pimped. Yeah. Okay? And My the, granddaddy was. The rumor, uh, another thing I found is that the people would work like 20 hours, up to 20 hours a day and only make like five bucks a week. And then they would have to give that money right back to the church. So they. That sounds like pimping to me. Yeah. It was basically. I don't know. Free yeah. slavery. It was basically slavery almost. Mm-mm. It wasn't, it wasn't slavery. It was you pimping. Pimping. What he was doing was selling them a dream. That's he true. Was, and that's what pimps do. Pimps sell you a dream. And in that dream is, one day, if you keep giving me all your money, we going to be rich together. Let me just hold it all. That's how pimps he's that's got. Go. He's got like that macho style that yeah. you can get. Because it's, it's creepy to listen to him talk. Yes. It's so And in creepy. a jump tank, he kept stuttering because he kept yeah. getting caught up. He was like, whoa, 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 nah, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something. This <laughs> yeah. how I gonna go there. That's what he kept saying. <laughs> yeah, I had to keep yeah. trying to convince them to. Now, was it, was he shot, he, he, was he shot or did he shoot himself? Because he didn't drink the cyanide. No, I think he was shot. Yeah, I think somebody shot him. Yeah, they shot. He got shot. His pimping days were over. <laughs> That's, yeah, because he was pimping. Uh, and okay. when you're trying to pimp, something, eventually, Pimping don't last for a long time. Yeah. I it's... really, I, I only just watched a movie about that, about pimping. <laughs> and it sounds like it's all a coat. It's all a coat. Because it that's is. all he was doing, trying to tell these women. He was trying to sell them a dream. Yeah. He was trying to sell them. One girl got her face cut open in the movie, right? Hmm. I think it was, uh, I can't think of the name of the movie. I can't quote it. But it was a movie. <laughs> and her face got cut open. And even after her face got cut open, he told, she told him, make it right. Tell me what I need to hear to go back out and do what I need to do for you so we can be rich. Right. That's all, because that's all it is. That's all he was trying to do, telling them what they needed to hear to do what he wanted them to do for him. Yeah. He was selling a dream. He was selling a dream. He was trying to go to Russia. And then he actually said in the tape, I'm calling Russia right now. <laughs> I'm the, all, what the, the land that's going on. That means he had somebody in the back with the yeah, phone. He didn't he have did. to hit the button. One old speakerphone back then. Because you had that one lady talking, and then the yeah, one other guy was saying. talking. Uh-huh. The old guy was mad that the lady was talking about yeah. not wanting to die. Yeah. But the lady was like, I want to be the I want to live. I want to live my own life. I want to be in control of my destiny. Yeah. And, he, and she was trying to convince everybody else, like, let's reconsider what we're doing. Yeah. What about this plane in Russia everybody keep talking about? He told them Russia ain't going to want us over there because we got all this media on us. First of all, it's Russia. Russia don't care about no media. They yeah. want the smoke. They with the smoke. They want, they want them somebody to try out. Yeah. That's how they do. 
Hey, you know, Putin don't care about Putin don't care about none of that crazy. Putin a gangster. Okay, he want all the smoke. Yeah, because they would want he the communism. Worried about it, but it was all a lie. It was all a lie. Yeah, I don't. I think Jim Jones. That was his plan. His plan. The moment that something like uh, the moment the government found out he was gonna kill all those people. Mm-hmm. I think that was a. I think that was a plan from the moment he. They started to get. Probably, probably, my guess would be the moment that that article got published from the uh, San Francisco Examiner. It was probably uh-huh. the moment when he decided, oh, crap, this ain't going to work anymore. It was crazy. That's how. And but, then he, everybody had to drink the Kool-Aid, but he didn't drink the kool His son, his son lived. Uh, he was at, what, a basketball game in Georgetown? He didn't care about none of it. And he was, uh, he didn't like how his dad was turning out. He was getting kind of scared or and mad. What, son? Yeah. Yeah. Like he knew something was wrong. But the crazy thing is his, his son said he loved being there. Yeah. He loved looking over the horizon and looking at all the color of different people. Yeah. And he was saying he thought it would work. He really did. He thought it would work. Just uh, had some snakes. What, what's that saying? Snakes in the fields or something? Snakes. Yeah, snakes in the grass. Snakes in the grass. Snakes, That's probably what, the Yeah. And, and Jim Jones really was a snake in the grass himself. That's all that was. He was a snake in the grass. Yeah. And it was his idea. Yeah. He just thought the grass would be high enough to, to, to uh, hide his snake, his snakery. <laughs> if that's the word. Is that yeah. the word? Snakery? Well, we gonna well we're, we're going to take it. We're going to take it. All right, uh-huh. so, uh, oh, uh, word of advice for viewers, the death tape uh, warning. Uh, if you, you can't find it online, it's very tragic. It's, if you're a, a very sensitive person, I don't recommend listening to it. Because I'm not really no, that, I'm, I'm not that sensitive, and I thought it was, it kind of got, like, to me, it just kind of blows my head that something like that really happened. Because you actually hear people dying in the background, so I don't. Yeah. Really recommend if you're too sensitive to go listen to it. It's definitely graphic. All right. So here's the last one. I feel like Ooh. I don't know that much about them, but really there's... they. I know a lot about them. Yeah, you know more than I do. People outside of this cult knows them as Moonies, but people inside the cult, they're considered the Unification Church of the United States. Now, they are a religious and semi-political are they full political? Would you say they're full political? Um, they have political views, and they use their political views to try to entice people into the into their uh, yeah union. Cause that's... Yeah. So this one also started in 1950s by Sung Mung Moon. And... Sung Young Moon. There you go. They eat salad. It's young. At least I know it name. <laughs> I'm not good it's at things, going on. man. I know it name. <laughs> and so, so this started in Japan and South Korea. Of course, this was uh, after uh, World War II, so Japan no longer had control over South Korea. And in 1935, Moon thought he was blessed by Jesus and that he got to meet him. And Jesus told him, hey, this is a rough translation. Hey, dude, I want you to finish my work. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Basically, what he thought, and so he became Jesus. Yeah, he wanted the second coming of Christ, and he wrote the Divine Principle, which the main views on that was basically humans are meant to be the center of the universe. Correct me if I'm wrong, by the way. And in 19 or er, in 1954, that's when it started. Uh, he started as the Holy Spirit Association for unification of world christianity that is some long title way that's too a, yeah that's a crazy one too way too long Super so long. 1971 you notice that these times are kind of overlapping a little Just yeah see. they are crazy these are like the most famous ones because i the i found like the top 10 and this one was top it was right below heaven's gate and then Manson and J- Jonestown was, was like number one because mm-hmm. it had the most deaths. And then uh, there were some other ones. Uh, Scientology's on that one, by the way, too. Oh, okay. 
That one. We can't talk. We're not we talking about them. We're not talking about them. That's for. That's just them. Hey y'all, y'all are okay with me? I'm yeah. I I know about y'all little red tents outside. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to, yeah. And we gonna. We're we not talking about y'all. Yeah, we we gonna leave them alone. Yeah, we're gonna leave them alone. So in 1971, they decided to move to do the USA, and they mostly had churches along the east side. And what their biggest no turning point was in 1982, Moon was convicted for false uh, federal income tax returns and conspiracy, and they considered this kind of like the turning point for them. And he died in 2012, even though the church still lives on, and he had 13 kids. <laughs> I and when his son took over the second coming of the Jesus Christ situation. Yeah. I don't know which one. His name, from what I, his name is Sung Young Moon too, hmm. I think. The second. Because, yeah, the second. Got to be the second. Yeah. Because I can um, see that. I have had encounters uh, with these people. Um, when I was about twelve years old, they came to Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, the weirdest thing is they came and we didn't even know who they were. They came and. I went to a predominantly black church as a kid. Mm -hmm. So they came to Greater Hope Baptist Church. This is all documented. All right. Okay. On the radio, in the news. So I can say it. <laughs> so they came to Greater Hope Baptist Church. <laughs> and uh, when they came there, he came and just rented the uh, recreational center out to do his services originally. So we just thought he was just some man that was coming to do some speaking in our gym. Right? Yeah. But what I didn't know is there was a lot of other stuff going on as well. So we, I remember leaving church one day and seeing people from all walks of life. It was Jews, Buddhists, uh, uh, um, Israelis. It was just people from everywhere because they wanted to see if this man was the person he said he was. Yeah. Especially because, you know, I don't know if you know anything about Judaism. Uh, they're still waiting on the same come to Jesus. They're still waiting on Jesus Christ to come or the Messiah. And this man said he was the Messiah, so I don't know. That's why these ascetic Jews were there, mm -hmm. but they were there at, my, at the church I went to. In the hood. They came to the hood. First <laughs> of all, right across the street, they sold crack cocaine. Oh, right across wow. The crack cocaine right across the street, right from the church. The news and media people Jews. there? Huh? The news media there that day? Well, I don't remember. See, this is the thing. When it happened, the news media didn't come to originally. Well, I'd never seen them. Yeah. But they had to have been there because that's how I ended up on the radio and it got exposed. Yeah. So this happened, this went on for about a month, month and a half, two, um, until one day um, we turned the radio on, on our way to church. And uh, this man is telling us on the radio that Greater Hope Baptist Church have been taken over by a cult. Wow. Right? <laughs> we don't know what's going on. We like what yeah. are they talking about, yeah. right? So, we, I wasn't in a cult. I was cult adjacent. That's what I just realized. <laughs> I was adjacent to a cult. Yeah. Uh, so he tells us that uh, I can't think of the Reverend's name right now. I can't think of his name. I don't know why it's slipped me. But the pastor of, uh, of Greater Hope Baptist Church have been taking money from this gentleman, and they are really close. He's been speaking about this gentleman in church uh, recently, telling how, how much of a good guy this guy was, and you know we should definitely listen to him. He got a lot of uh, 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 great ideas, and you know he's a man we all should follow. We don't know why he's saying this stuff. He's just saying it. That's all I know. All right. So when it all was exposed on the radio, uh, his daughter called up to the to the radio. And said, you don't understand. My daddy really needed that money. Wow. So it had to be a lot of money if a, if a daddy really needed it. Yeah. Right? Supposedly he went to Jerusalem and buried the cross with this man. And, and it, yeah, it was it was wild. And that kind of, yeah, that happened. Uh, he patted me on the head once, but I don't know if he put a curse. I don't know if that was. <laughs> he patted me. Was that? Okay. Yeah, it could have been a. <laughs> You know, a voodoo curse. I don't know what it was, but he patted me. That's all I know. And I never actually spoke to the gentleman, but that happened. That's weird. 
And then they yeah, had the uh, the massive marriage in Madison Square Garden. Yes. Now, do you know how that set up? No. Originally, how it set up is he would take his whole congregation, everybody be in one place, and he would point at two people, you and her, or her and him. He would point that y'all don't know each other, y'all get married. You gonna go with him? You gonna have a baby with her? He gonna be have a baby with him or her? Them, those. Okay. Right, and that's how it worked. Now they switched it. You have to be they. You have to send your picture in. Yeah. And he puts it all on a board, and he just matches people with their pictures yeah. and put them together. And you get, but usually you're matched with somebody. If you're in America, you're matched with somebody from Korea. If you're in Korea, you match with somebody in America. That's all the photos. I did see the yes. photos though. So that's how they used to work. Um, I heard read a story of a young lady. They got married to a, a Korean gentleman that spoke no English. They, she spoke English, she, but he spoke <laughs> like barely any English. Ninety day fiance. <laughs> yeah, and they had a baby together. Wow. They had a baby. They were married for nine years before he she realized this is weird. Why did I do this? <laughs> My husband don't even speak my language yeah and i am married it is because the 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 messiah or the minister then told me this is what this supposed to be and then you want to roll with it so she did so she moved to korea oh wow and she stayed there for nine she actually in korea right now i wish i could get her name so you can reference the story it's on youtube she's still over there but she's not a part of the church anymore but she's raising her daughter over there. Because she over there. Her daughter's, you know, yeah. kind of in the culture now. So, But I don't know how they do co-parenting because he's still in the I Unification bet that's, Church. I bet that's the photo I saw it, of could her, be possible. her. Could be possible. That could be a famous, one of the famous ones. Dang, that's crazy, could be though. Possible. I'm like, you and you and you and you and you and you and... Go make babies. <laughs> that's just what it is. They go make babies. Oh, that's just crazy. So they made babies, and that's how they keep the, the congregation going. Because they raise the kids up the exact same way. And yeah. then all the kids get married, and they do it all over again. It sounds like the only bad thing they were doing, other than, I guess that, I, I, I don't know if that's actually bad. Well, I mean, it is, because you're not really getting the right to pick your own mate. I'll use that word. But uh, the other bad thing would probably be money related. That and the marriage. Yeah. I, I bet the marriage thing is what probably got a lot of people. Well, no, that was. If you. That. Wasn't the marriage thing in the last. Mm, no, because he died in 2012. Never mind. No. So, yeah. So, it'd be the, ta- the, the money thing and the marriage thing is probably what they're most famous for. Or, now. That could be, yeah, probably now. Now, this is the crazy thing. When, just to backtrack a little bit, yeah. when that whole situation happened in Memphis, Tennessee, um, I think it was around 2001 or two, mm-hmm. maybe. No, it could have been 99. I'm trying to, th- I don't know how old, what, the, I was about 11 or 12 when it happened. Yeah. But I found an article that he was going around to 400 black churches. Okay. So the crazy thing about let's backtrack a little bit. Mm-hmm. The crazy thing about um, them coming to Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know what year it happened uh, or whatever, but they actually uh, were going up to 400 churches, black churches, to convert them all into the Unification Church to give them an idea of the marriages and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, only black churches. When he came to my mind, he was going to 400 churches to get to sell them an idea of what he was going, he got going on. That's weird. Craziness. Craziness. Um, was he trying to like get the equality thing? I don't know. I don't know. This was happening at like late 90s, early 2000s. So the equality was there. We had we had to worry about no equality. Well, say I to worry about equality, but it wasn't a. <laughs> it's still going on now. It's still going on. <laughs> It's been going on. Anyway. Uh, it wasn't as bad. It wasn't, huh? It, it was not as bad. Yeah, not as bad. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slowly. You know. Exactly. Black Lives Matter. Anyway, uh, I don't know if it was what it was, but that's what they were. He was going. He was going on a tour of 400 black churches. And to those 400 black churches, trying to sell them an idea. And I guess he was doing it with money. That would, he was doing it with that, money. Yeah. They, they were uh, causing issues with money. Yeah. He had a lot of it. So he was trying to, you know, entice people with it. I know they bought a couple churches, too. It wasn't like mm-hmm. one. They bought a couple because uh, there was a photo and it was huge church. And they don't. They go off the Divine Bible. Because I know, like... The Divine Bible. Or the Divine Principle, sorry. Instead of the Bible. Oh, okay. So... I, was, I, ain't, I ain't heard of the Divine Bible. That's <laughs> I mean, a whole other Bible. Divine. Did you ever read that? What, the Divine Principle? Yeah. Mm-mm, I need uh-huh. to. Don't read it? I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe I may or... Uh, I don't think I will, to be honest with you. Uh, I've been saying I'm going to read a little bit more. Yeah. Uh in general, just to, you know, get an idea. Because even doing this right here, I had to do some research and I read some things and I was like, hmm, you know, it's a lot of stuff in the world that you don't know. No. Yeah, I mean, there is a and lot. you don't see. Yeah, mm-hmm. because the world's so big, you know, in general. Yes. Crazy things have That's gone down. That's how it go. Now, the, the, the Unification Church just came visit me, or I don't, they didn't do it on purpose, but they just came and visit uh, me at work not too long ago. On accident. Yeah. <laughs> On so accident. it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. So it was they pull up and be like, girl. "Hey, Derek, what up, man?" They did that. I, that's what I felt. I was nervous. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> they came. It was a little. It was a nineteen-year-old girl came on campus uh-huh. selling glass stained pictures on campus. Now she was so determined to sell these glass stained uh, paintings. Uh, that she was knocking on the doors. Uh, okay, I work at a, I, me. I don't know if everybody knows this, but me and you work at the same place. We work at a lab. Yeah, together. we work at yeah. Okay, work at a lab. And at this lab, we have different buildings, things of that nature. So she was walk, walking around the lab, knocking on all the doors outside, trying to get people to come out to buy these stained glass pictures. Right. I wasn't we there that day. Me. No, I think it was like a Thursday when it happened. Ah, okay, uh, that's why. We tell this. We tell this girl this is private property you cannot be out you can't be in here like this ain't nobody gonna come out here by these pictures right yeah. we have no you can't be out here soliciting so she's scary off right yeah now she tells me the church or the place the the organization she's with in her little spell and that's why i told her no soliciting she gotta go so i go back inside the building to tell my uh one of the co-workers in, in another one of the labs what's actually going on mm-hmm. and what's the name of the organization she looks it up when she looks up the organization, the organization is sponsored by, wait for it, the Unification Church. Oh, my God. So now I think these people looking for me again. They all, oh, my God. They keep up. So that is so, so weird to, go to have them twice in your life. Twice in my life. So I go back outside to run and try to find a little girl because I, now I want to save her. I want to tell her what's going on. It's weird, though, because how our campus is built, it's not like it's right on the road. Like, you have to know it's back there almost. Exactly. I oh. think she knew I was there. They knew I was there. They're coming for they you, man. They didn't get me. They didn't get me. They want you to be a Mooney. <laughs> they want me to be a Mooney again. Apparently, they find that offensive. I wonder if that's true. What, the know. Moonies? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what the media has uh, portrayed them as, the Moonies. Because they don't consider themselves... A cult? The Moonies, they they can consider themselves uh, a church. Just yeah. the unification church that's ran by a gentleman with the last name Moon. I mean... They the Moonies. They don't even matter. They the Moonies. It's like Church they of Christ them. and said it's Church of Moon. Yeah. <laughs> church of Moons. That's what we're going to say. That's exactly what that is. If he called himself the, the second coming of uh, Jesus Christ anyway, you know. No. Yeah. Church of the Moons. That would, you know. That's weird. No, I, I've actually never heard of this kind of church before. Yeah. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, but they, they out there. And there's a lot of other places that we probably didn't touch on that's just as wild and interesting as... The Unification Church and other, other Oh, other yeah. Things. I bet. 
All right, so yeah. that's going to lead into our last question. Uh, okay, are you ready? So this is like a yeah. two-part question, and we're both going to answer. One, why do people go into cults? And two, would you go into it? Would you join a cult? Who going? You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Mm, I guess I can go first. Cause yeah, go I'll go ahead and go first. Okay, so I think people that join cults, uh, one like Charles Manson, they were getting something out of it. Drugs, bam. Manipulation, check. Uh, the Jonestown, they had a great idea, but you know they didn't have the greatest leadership. So, by the time that they were already in, they have given up all their house, their money, their life savings. They had nothing to go home to. And also, when people join these cults, not only does it kind of affect the people in the cult, but it also affects the families. Because um, there were, I mean, 900 people died that day. Like, you know, a lot of people outside of those 900 people, those families are affected by it. I mean, even... You weren't even part of that unification, and you were like, yeah, this cult was near me. Oh, my God. Like, it's kind of creepy. To me, like, cults are not, like, they're like a TV thing, and it just blows my mind that they exist. And that brings me into mm -hmm. fact, would I ever join a cult? Well, I, I've done the, like, the pyramid scheme. Well, not really. I was like, no, I'm not giving you any more money. Pyramid scheme is a cult. It's a cult. Yeah, it's a cult. So, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not giving you. Uh, I went to two parties. Just because I, I wanted to go to parties, let's face it. Didn't feel right because they were constantly saying the same stuff over and over and over. Hey, guys, I can work at home. You can, too. And I was just like, okay, well, that's weird. What if I don't want to work at home? What if I want to have a second job? I'm like, back, the, back up. So that's the other reason why. I would be awful in a cult. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm like this at work. If somebody tries to tell me to do something and I know it's wrong, I'm like, yeah, no. I'm not doing it. And I'll prove them that it's wrong. I'll go out of my way and be like, this is why it's wrong, and this is why I'm not doing it. So the moment I'll be in a cult, like, he'll be talking, like, uh, Charles Mintz will be like, I'm, you're going to have to kill these people. I'll be like, um, yeah, I don't think I want to do that. I can't even put a, a straw <laughs> in a Capri Sun. <laughs> you're going to have to ask somebody else. <laughs> I, can, oh, I can do that stuff. And even with... Even if I had somebody like I, I, I got charismatic. charismatic, I don't think I would still follow them. I would be like, I can like them to the end of the world. And I would still be like, mm, should we really be doing that? Are you sure about that? Is that going to require me to do stuff that I don't want to do? Well, yeah, you're going to have to, I'm like, nah, um, that's a, uh, a hard pass for me sorry <laughs> so i wouldn't be able to live in a cult and then the other thing like that compound of jonestown no way uh-uh no 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 i don't i don't like sharing i've done the roommates thing no i'm not living like that i'm not working all day and not getting shit for it like oh no i like doing the gardening and all that but no i want to be able to come in watch tv and chill for like an hour like no i couldn't <laughs> I don't, and then sharing a bedroom with somebody. No. I'm like, get out of here. We also did not. It might be most, just a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. We also did not bring up Dave Koresh. I was thinking about bringing him up, but I feel like we have enough murder on, with the ones we had. So. Yeah, we got a lot of staff. <laughs> yeah, like, that would have been a very long podcast if we did all four yeah. of them. So. All right. Here we go, man. Okay. Why do people join cults? And would you join a cult? Very interesting question. So, why do people join cults? I think people join cults because they're looking for acceptance. A lot of people yes. want to be accepted, um, and they feel like the only way they will be accepted as who they are is by following somebody that they believe has their best interest in hand. Yeah. A lot of times that's not how it is. But a lot of people... Uh, do it for those those reasons. Uh, the reason of like they feel like their life has no meaning behind it. So by being in a cult, it would give their life purpose because some people never figure out who they are yeah. in life. So they let somebody else figure it out for them. Yeah. A lot of people, without a doubt. Yeah, so 
That's he, that's that's why a lot of things I believe people Brother Hannah, join cults. Now, yeah. How should I but, live my but, life? Yes. So that's what they want. They want somebody to tell them how to eat, poop, pee, mm-hmm. you know, think, walk, think, because they can't do it for themselves. So yeah. they join a cult. Yeah. Now yep. would I ever join a cult? Mm-hmm. I think I might. I almost have. <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I when I was about sixty, I would join a gang. Now that sounds crazy when I say gangs can be like a cult. But a gang is an idea. Yeah. And a group collective that people all believe in. Yeah. Right? You may not give up. So it's, well, you, I guess you could you almost give, call a gang a cult. Yeah, some gangs might be. I ain't going to say all gangs. So I'm yeah, not going to say not all gangs, gangs or, or, or a cult. Because some are organizations. Some are gangs. Some are organizations. And when an organization has an idea of a purpose that they, you know, they're yeah. doing something greater than themselves. But some, some are gangs. Some are cults. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna join a cult. I think. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. The the leader. Will I ever join a cult? I think I almost did once. And I'm gonna tell you. So, in the midst of being a teenager, I'm gonna join a gang, and the gang was a cult. I'm gonna tell you that it wasn't an organization. It was a cult. So, and I had it, the leader of it was very crazy. What's the word we've been trying to say all night? Charismatic. 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 <laughs> he was a very charismatic leader. And with this very charismatic leader, uh, he decided um, tonight was the night I come and hang with, with the rest of the gang members. So he comes to my house. I'm 16 years old now. Just a true story. Yeah. He comes to my house, and uh, he, he, he beats the horn and say, I'm outside. He said, no, nah, I'm coming in. No, I tell him, here I come. He go, no, I'm coming in. He knocks on the door. My mother answers the door. He said, "Can I, ma'am, can I speak to you for a minute about your son? Yeah. He says, my name, I can't, well, I ain't gonna say his name. I ain't gonna do that. He gonna, he said, my name is OG Gangster Gangster. That's what I'm gonna say his name for. <laughs> That's a good gangster name. And he didn't say OG Gangster Gangster. I he know, said, I know. He, he said, You're good. You know, his name was, I'm gonna say his name was Larry Smith. <laughs> he said, my name is, my name was, Larry Smith. Wait, wait, wait. You're, in my you're, private... you're, oh, isn't, isn't that that vegetable's name? What vegetable? From VeggieTales. I ain't never watched it. <laughs> His name... Is he a gang member? <laughs> it's, it's a cucumber. A it's a cucumber. So you telling me that the cucumber is an OG gang member? Wait, let me... In a gang that's a vegetable. So we're going to call him OG Cucumber. That's what we're going to call him. OG Cucumber. Yeah, that's his name. Larry Smith? Larry the Cucumber. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to call this gang, we're going to call this gangster OG Cucumber. Then. There you go. So OG Cucumber Smith, Larry Smith, um, tells my mother, here's my driver's license. Here's my tag number. If your son is ever with me, mm-hmm. or if he ever get in any trouble, Prior to being with me, you can give me a call. All right. Yeah. I'm in. I am in college right now. I am going to get my my bachelor's in political science or some yeah. crazy mess. Right. He tells my mother this. He said, "Here, I'm taking him to X Y Z to hang with another gentleman, which I, I at the time I was working with. I was working in Sonic. Um, he said, "I'm gonna take him over to his house. We are gonna call this gentleman uh 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 uh." uh a uh, uh, big homie, gangster, uh, 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 carrot. We're gonna call him carrot because the other one's OG cucumber. So, big homie carrot, gangster carrot. He, we going to his house. So, he tells my mother. Now, my mother looks at this gentleman and says, You're a fine young man. Listen, I think my son is in good hands. Yes, he can go with you. We get in the car and he looks, and I, I'm in the back seat now. Yeah. And he, he pulls out two guns and put them on the seat. And tells me, are you ready to get into some gangster-ish? <laughs> and we drive off. So I think I'm going to join the code once. Yeah. I hung with them for about three weeks. They, they were indoctrinating me. They were telling me all the rules. And, well, I'm glad you didn't you know, stay. Telling me all the history. I didn't do it. I didn't. I, I, because they, they they said they had to punch me in my face. Yeah. For me to join it. And that's a, if you think about it, <laughs> most coaches got to 
you, when you eat it, something you want yeah. to do something you didn't want to do. Uh, and I didn't want to be punched in the face for real, for real. I worked with so somebody I that uh, was part of a gang that ended up being arrested by the FBI. He was probably in a coat. Yeah. He was in a gang coat. I'm not saying where, who, and I'm not saying any of that. Mm, all the names is changed to protect the innocent. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh man, I'm glad you got out. Yeah, I that, never, I didn't get all the way in, so we were good. That would have we been good. Yeah. That but was some Memphis. Gangs okay. Well, yeah, because yeah, I've seen, I've seen some that are kind of, because you could, I've seen, um, what was the one? I must have been a, there's one in Memphis, I think that helps with the schools, with the ah. the music thing. I can't remember. I saw it on one of, the, uh, of a food. No, no, what's that? Oh, it's some Netflix thing I saw. That there was a gang that helps. And then you got, like, biker gangs that go and help, like, the courts with the kids, with they their do. abusers. I mean, not all of them are bad, but. Gotcha. I'm, okay, so I'm going to do some unorthodox. We're talking about gang. I'm going to give one shout out. I'm going to do a shout out. They're okay. not really gang. This is my neighborhood, but, you know, Drake said them in the song one time, 700, 3 out of 5. I'm to the mafia. Mitchell Heights Mafia. I'm going to give them a shout out because they're going to be watching. Okay. Y'all not a gang. Y'all y'all organization. Y'all help the kids. <laughs> All right. Y'all not a gang. Shout out that, to y'all. That may be the one I'm thinking 700. of. Huh? That may be the one I'm thinking of because it was on a Netflix. It ain't. It ain't. It, it, it's, it's not. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Wait, why is Drake? Why does Drake? Drake's from Canada. Drake daddy from Memphis. Drake who? Drake's father is from Memphis. Oh, I didn't know that. I knew. Yeah, so he be in Memphis a lot. Oh, I thought he grew up in. Well, I knew he grew up in Canada. He grew up. He, he grew up in Canada, but he spent all his summers in Memphis. Gotcha. See, I didn't know that. So he has a he has a lot of ties to Memphis. I'm, I'm used to him being in a, in a wheelchair. Yeah, our, I grew Aubrey, up. With, Aubrey grew up with some gangsters. I'm used to him uh, being that nerdy tall kid. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah, he was the man for running around a little bit. He Just looks different bit. now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, uh, anything else you would like to bring up from any of the three? Uh, don't join a cult. Yeah, don't join a you might have to. You might have to, uh, the your... Kool-Aid ain't gonna be regular Kool-Aid. <laughs> and, uh, you might have to marry somebody you don't know from a different country. And uh, ease up on the LSD. Or you might do some drugs that stay in your system forever. Yeah. I'm too... You don't want to do none of those things. So just let it go. Like 60. Go, go, go do some yoga. And don't, or, you know. Oh my go God. No, no, no. You can't say that. There's a cult with the yoga thing. Okay. Well, we ain't talking I, about them. I can't bring it up because it's against YouTube guidelines. That's what you do. It's Stretch about. Your arms and legs out. It's yoga, but you're pleasing a woman at the same time. That's all I can Ooh. say because of YouTube guidelines. I can't say anything more than that. Okay, send me send me that quote <laughs> uh, in a in a private message so I can look them up. I might go visit them to see if uh if I might fit in with 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 their, I will with send their you personally. Yeah, send, yeah, send me that. So I don't I can, want I'm, YouTube coming after I'm, me. Uh, uh-uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him on Instagram. I'm gonna find him on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram. <laughs> oh, he's got uh, a site. Yeah, Instagram. It got a site. What got a site? No, you. Are you gonna say? No, my oh, God. Yeah. You finished. I just everybody just follow. I would, if anybody's watching, just follow me on Instagram at DD West three five seven. I'll link that in the description. It, uh, it's in the description below. I got videos of me eating dog cookies and getting bad haircuts. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's some funny stuff. Just follow me. You know, I do actually do comedy for uh, actually for real. Uh, she's been to my show. Yeah, he's and, he's um, really good. So, um, it would be a lot of information. And there, follow me. Uh, look out for me. Hopefully, in the next couple months, I'll be doing a show. Hopefully, a lot of people can come and see me. And I will be putting up content on my Instagram, and maybe on YouTube. You never know. Hopefully, I'm, we'll do this yeah. again. Hopefully, we can do this again. Maybe the next sure. one can be on uh, aliens or pirates. <laughs> 